Thank you and good afternoon. Um, actually, my background is, uh, is, is with the NHS. I actually retired back in March of this year. I was the head of facilities management for the Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board up in, uh, up in, up in North Wales. So I've been out for about uh, six months now. Way. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and enjoying life. So brilliant. Thank you very much. What we want to do, actually, is because we spent a morning sat down and, uh, and, and, and listening to people actually kind of uh, pre present, what we would like to do is, is go through our pre presentation quite quickly yeah, so that we can actually get time, so that we can have a little bit of a debate and we can talk about you know, um, elements in regards to uh, uh, you know, final de decontamination and environmental cleanliness. And we're, we're really gifted today to have Peter um, with us from, from, from S uh, um, MSL, who has done a, a, a huge amount of the uh, background um, uh, laboratory work in regards to some of these, the, these methods and methodologies that we use in environmental uh, cleanliness. And to be honest, you can ask Peter any question whatsoever and he'll have an answer for it because I, I just wish I had that brain. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, so let me start by... Um, covering Metis Health and, and, and the journey, and then I'll hand over to Peter, who will talk more about the, uh, 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 the, the testing and uh, hypochlorous acid uh, in regards to uh, lab terms. Okay, um, I can't start by not, not mentioning Metis Health. Jamie, sat down there, wave, please. Um, and, and, and the journey, really. Um, they're sponsoring the session today, and thank you very much. Um, I suppose it's, it's our journey. Um, and uh, I started out in healthcare looking at um, hypochlorous acid, first of all, back in about 2012, that's when that started to come onto the, the horizon, and then in 2013 uh, in regards to UV. And I remember sitting in a porter cabin and Guy from uh, the CEO of, uh, of Gamma coming and bringing in this wonderful light system that costs... £95,000 at the time, and I think we all said, okay, it looks good, but actually it's just a couple of bulbs, so why is it £95,000? Yeah, and we didn't really know at that time, you know, what it was going to do for us. Okay, so over, over that period of time, oh, sorry, over that period of time, we've done uh, a lot of research and development, and we found that in 2020, Metis Health, or Metis Health Group, was actually formed. Um, and it, 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 it was formed to actually allow us to do a lot of research and development in regards to the industry and the world of final decontamination. And it was also designed because actually we were finding that there was quite a lot of flaws in regards to the use of UV and, and HPV, especially in regards to time and, uh, and, and money. So we wanted to actually look at what alternatives were out there for us to actually... Uh, look at uh, how we could actually remove the use of HPV from my particular organisation at that point in time. Um, so, yeah, 2021, uh, we launched uh, Hydra and Solvic. Uh, 2020, um, 2021, yeah, that was a, uh, the, the launch of the pro product, and then we went into a, a phase where we were looking at um, uh, evaluating that and how we could actually improve on that particular product. When I say we, it's because um, we went into a form of partnership as a health board with Metis to actually support some of that innovation and development during that time with this particular product. Um, then we saw, during that period, we saw that we had um, uh, a pandemic, yeah, which uh, obviously we, we saw lots and lots of different kind of men in white suits with green, green packs on the back and people with black hair turning to, to, to blonde hair because they were spraying all this stuff everywhere. Yeah, so basically we went through that phase and we thought, well, actually, let's do the research and development. Let's learn on that. Yeah, and let's make sure that we bring out a product which is really, really safe. Um, 2020, 2022, continuous development, 2023, yeah, they brought out a new uh, machine which is for small spaces and ambulance cleaning. And the research and development that they're doing at the present moment is actually moving away from misting and look at whether they can actually get hypochlorous acid, which is actually in tablet form. So we could actually look at taking away some of the chlorine tablets that we're using at the present moment and bring in a safer product. Okay, just a quick overview of our case study that we did during 2021-2022. Um, we chose three hospitals, we, an acute hospital, community hospital, um, and uh, 
we decided, yeah, let's do our own trial. Yeah, you've got lots and lots of testing and, and lots of stuff uh, that you can actually demonstrate to us, but we want to trial it ourselves. Um, so we did our normal room cleaning. Uh, we, we supported the test using ATP and, uh, and microswabbing. Uh, and we went through the process of, uh, of misting a room and then obviously taking the analysis from, from that. With the ATP, the results were available immediately, but with the swabs, we sent them off to an independent laboratory for testing. Okay, so the summary on that, yeah, we got really, really good results. Um, what we found was the standard cleaning, as you would find in healthcare anyway, um, is really, really good. Um, the, 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 the physical cleaning was, was really, re really what we wanted to see. Um, and across the board, we had really, really good results. I think there was about four swabs where it showed counts that were above uh, uh, the minus 10 um, and they were kind of areas where we could actually mitigate one area is the back of a remote control which has actually been lying on on on, on the t on the table so actually the fog hadn't actually been uh, ad actually unable to actually penetrate that that particular surface and we found that overall about 86 percent of uh, what we wanted to see was actually what we wanted to see in, in, in our normal environment, but when we went into an HSD unit, all our samples were, yeah, 100% positive. So we were really, really pleased with the outcomes of, um, of hypochlorous acid, yeah, and at that point in time, we were looking at this transition from, from HPV and UV over to, uh, o over, over to Hockle. Um, so, yeah, really, really positive uh, results from that. And we can see there that, um, uh, you know, all, all trial areas, yeah, really good results. And when we look at the high dependency, yeah, we actually got confirmed positive results of 100%, which was absolutely fantastic. So we thought to ourselves, okay, it's time for us to transition and move into uh, the world of uh, hypochlorous acid. Okay, the two products, they're on, they're, they're on display upstairs on, 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 on the Meta stand. We had Hydra, um, which uh, um, uh, is, is the machine used for actually dispersing the, uh, uh, the liquid. And we've got Solvic. Solvic is the uh, solution that has replaced us, uh, or is the hypochlorous acid that we're using as an alternative now to, uh, uh, to HPV. Um, and it's great, really, because it's really, really friendly. Um, you know, so somebody said to me, you can drink about eight litres of it and, uh, and actually it won't kill you. If I said that to Peter, he'd say, don't drink hypochlorous acid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, really, really active, very, very good for uh, fi final disinfection. Uh, and uh, they actually now have two products. They have 150 parts per million and they have a 500 parts per million product which uh, are available. Um, so how does it work? Well, actually, um, we found it's faster. Uh, and Peter will do a little bit around that in a, in a minute. We found that it's really simple. Um, where before we were having to have really trained staff to use and do our uh, hydrogen peroxide process. Yeah, yeah, you just turn it on, actually. It's, it's really safe. You can be in the room at the same time if you want, but don't be. Um, it's very highly cost effective. Um, you know, we found that uh, actually hypochlorous acid is a lot cheaper than the purchase of um, uh, hydrogen peroxide. It's pH neutral. Yeah, great, it doesn't burn people. Um, as I say, it's very effective. And, uh, and uh, it's got no clinical resistance, which is, uh, uh, is really good as a product. Um, a little bit of time saving. I once said to one of, one of the managers when I was working with the NHS, you know, what, what is the worst thing for you? And they said, well, every time we HPV, we have to have somebody sat outside on a chair. Uh, and I said, so that's great. Yeah, great for the person sat there. And, I asked one of these people, I said, you know, you've been sat there for four hours whilst we've been doing this process. Obviously, you're really good on brick breaker on your phone, but actually, you know, how do you feel? And they said, well, actually quite demoralized because I would rather be out there cleaning and this process be kind of doing what it needs to do. And that's what we've actually been able to remove with the use of um, hypochlorous acid. So when we did an equivalent of, 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 of time saved in one of our, in one of our hospitals, it's actually rate related to about 10 working staff days. Um, so that's 10 days where a member of staff was actually sat outside a room whilst we were decontaminating that room, which actually was saved. So that's 10 days worth of cleaning. The other things that we found is that, you know, because it's easier and because it's safer, 
we can actually get into places quicker. So we will find that as part of a rolling program of cleaning, it was probably taking anywhere between two or three days to actually do a deep clean of a ward. Yeah, I think now actually, and some, some of the guys that do this are sat in the audience, um, I think we're down to about a day. Um, so it means that we're actually able then to multiple clean over a week instead of actually just looking at one ward. And when you've got a hospital um, environment and you've got a health board that's got 134 wards, that's quite a lot of time time saved and uh, the ability to actually rotate that uh, that cleaning process. Okay, can I hand over to Peter, who's going to go through all the interesting stuff? I come from a company called MSL Solution Providers. We are an independent testing laboratory, so I'm not associated with Metis or the liquid product. We test these machines, these products for a multitude of companies to make sure that they are making claims that they can support with data. I've been involved in this industry for about 10 years now, both on the manufacturing side and now on the lab testing side. And I sit with BSI and the European Commission that write and develop these standards for labs to use across the world. So I'm going to do a little bit about what HOCL is, so we're all are on the same page. It's a weak acid, it's formed from chlorine and water being dissolved together. Um, and it has strong antimicrobial and growth inhibition properties. They found that low PPMs of this product, as low as five or 10 PPM, can inhibit replication of cells through damaging proteins. It's not a disinfectant at that level, but it stops further growth. So it's very effective even from minimal quantities. It's easy to make, but hard to keep stable. And only recently have the equip has equipment got good enough that we can have products like this on the market that remain stable in bottle or in use. And as Paul has rightly said, it is non-hazardous to the most part. Like he said, don't drink it. Um, but compared to other actives commonly used in the healthcare sector, the warning labels, the general use conditions are a lot less hazardous to staff. Oh, that's got a bit mixed up there. Uh, what are common alternatives to this? So we, we've all seen a multitude of products. There are people selling alternative products upstairs. Um, I'm going to go over some of them and their pros and cons versus hypochlorous acid. So you have quats or quaternary ammonium salts. These are probably your most common household disinfectant. If you look at your household trigger sprays you see on any supermarket shelf, they're probably quat based. They're extremely stable. They leave residues that can have antimicrobial effects over a period of time if you're okay with residues being left on your surface but they are slow acting in test methods you'll see commonly claims up to an hour long for certain organisms if not longer depending on what you're trying to claim against you have hydrogen peroxide biggest disadvantage is you need silver to make it stable enough to be used and inhalation of silver molecules is bad for everyone there's been cases with client there uh, with well manufacturers uh, get into lawsuits over silver inhalation with cleaning staff that have turned skin grey and nails purple and all sorts of nasty side effects. There's ozone, so really high PPMs to work to get this to work effectively, far beyond what is safe to be in a room. Um, and then acids like peracetic acid, citric acid, lactic acid tend to have very strong odours, can be very corrosive, have lots of warning labels. These all do a job, and they all serve a different purpose within an environment like a healthcare uh, ward or GP. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the testing that these products undergo. So I'm going to break it down first into the basics of this. Testing for efficacy is done in what, what is called phases and steps. Phase one is your R&D stage. This is things you do before you're even going to market just to prove that your active has some chance of going through the later stages of testing. So we'll skip pretty much over that. Phase two is your lab tests that prove efficacy for the purpose of regulation and claims on your label. Comes in step one, which is suspension tests. They're not very real world uh, representing. And then there's phase uh, step two, which is things like surface tests, which can be more bespoke to your area of use um, they better represent the real world as much as lab conditions can do. 
and then you have phase three tests which are field trials they're not required by any regulation but are good to prove a purpose or prove a sentiment on a label all products that are on the market need to be compliant to some level of regulation depending on what active they have in the case of hypochlorous acid there's BPR requirements that are fastly, fast approaching. But that is the biocidal product regulation. To meet the criteria of that, every claim you make on the label has to be matched by a set of tests dictated by Europe, as well as local governments may require you to do specific testing for their market. So now I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the product uh, HOCL versus other common actives. This is for general purpose cleaning. At the top we've got the actives and their level of active. These are all based, based on real test data, obviously anonymized for obvious purposes. So a 1500 ppm quat you can see is much slower acting than the other three. A 5 minute, 10 minute, 60 minute contact time for general claims. In some purposes that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're able to keep a surface wet for that long with mopping solutions or fogging solutions, absolutely fine for use. It depends on how quick you want that space back or how often that space is used. Perisetic acid at 1,000 ppm is very quick, but is extremely corrosive, does have a really strong odour. So again, are you trading off pace for other disadvantages where you've got staff who might have to wear masks, gloves, lots of PPE to get that quick turnaround time. And then sodium hypochlorite, bleach, works on a good medium it's fast and effective but it does break down it smells and it damages metals if you've got expensive pieces of equipment and you're pouring bleach all over them i'm sure we've all seen it and my wife managed to clean the uh, stainless steel oven in the front room in the kitchen with uh, bleach and uh, put it this way we didn't get the deposit back on that um and then whole room disinfection so this is the fogging that metis uh, provide the machine for this is how much time does it take to pass this method using the different common actives. So this is running the machine till you've got the right level in the room, how long you have to keep it at that time, and then how long to aerate it until you can use that space again. Those three times combined, how long you lose that room for when you are fogging it. On average, you're saving 100 minutes against other liquid products just by using hypochlorous acid because it aerates so much quicker to a safer level where people can enter the room again. Ozone takes a long time to dissipate. It is effective at the same level, but you lose nearly an hour and a half, two hours extra time to that space. Hydrogen peroxide, again, it's 100 minutes we've seen using 20% hydrogen peroxide in lost time. UV light is much quicker than all of them, However, it does not reach shadowed surfaces. This is the big thing with whole room disinfection. If you are trusting people to go in and wipe down every surface, they will wipe behind a bed post, underneath a table. UV light cannot go around corners, it has to travel in straight lines. So you've either got someone coming in and repositioning the light all around the room and having to run it for 60 minutes every time and then moving it again. It has to be planned on how far away from every surface because you cannot, cannot exceed more than two meters according to the test method itself that they use for UV light now. So the simplest solution is liquid chemical for the shortest period of time to get the same effect. As you can see there's some that say not tested. You have to find a product that meets the criteria for your facility. Black mold is not something commonly seen as an issue within healthcare environments. Don't get me wrong, it is, but it's not something that you may have whole room disinfection for that purpose. So in the case of the hypochlorous acid product, it wasn't tested. But in the case of UV light, that's the same. It's not effective against mold spores, nor is it that effective against viruses in UV light in time periods of 60 minutes. There's also limitations in this test method on how long you can have that organism on a test surface. So next I'll quickly show you how these fogging methods work so you can get an understanding of how it applies to your facility, your spaces that you're using these products in. 
So first you have what's called a distribution test. This is a new addition to the method as of 2022. This is replacing the French method that previously was in effect for fogging devices. Distribution is exactly what it says in the tin. Do you get the products to every corner in that room? Prior to this method, there was no requirement to prove that your product reached the corners of a space. As crazy as that sounds. How it works is you put eight coupons within a room that are in four corners of the space. Every one of those coupons has got to show a five log reduction, a 99.999%. If you can't do that to every coupon in that space, your product doesn't get past the first stage in a fogging uh, method. Not every device gets through this. We see quite a lot of products fall down just at this stage. You have a lot of forces that start to act on liquids when you spray them at pressure to corners of a space. It creates buildup, and the product can't actually reach corners, not unless you're using different methods of getting that mist around. Um, the space that we use at our facility is 74 meters cubed, but the test goes all the way up to 200 meters cubed if you've got a facility that has that. I don't know many places that have an empty room that's 200 meters cubed, but it's possible. And then you have small enclosure for things like class two safety cabinets if you're working in virology culture uh, labs. It goes down to one meters cubed on the smaller end of this test scale. Once you've passed a distribution test, you have to pass your, uh, pass your efficacy test. So you have your device, three coupons, and you must, must meet the criteria set in the method on a surface facing away from your machine. So it's indirect exposure of your product for the contact time that you set as a machine. Again, you have to meet the log requirements of that. So if you are doing bacteria, yeast, mold, there are criteria set by these standards that the product must pass. So to make a claim of fogging, you should be looking for the EN test methods like EN17272, or in case of UV light, it's BS8628. Those two methods define whether the product is fit for use. And if a pro product is being sold without those test methods, they're technically now out of compliance. 